So how's everyone now? <laughs> Blissful, right? Um, oh, yeah. Um, does anyone have a topic you want me to cover today? Okay, is that it? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. It's very interesting when we look at life from a higher perspective. Some of the things you're asking about ancestors and Shambhala, angels, and so on. Even though we're on the spiritual path, far too many people still think that this is a linear conversation we're having where there's angels over there and there's deceased loved ones over there and ancient lifetimes. They're not separate. Everything is within us. So my past lives are part of me. All of my stars when I'm born, the stars, planets, houses, they're all a part of me. My destiny, soul's purpose is a part of me. You've never had a relationship with anybody that wasn't reflecting parts of yourself. Because there is no other. But that's a little much for the mind to comprehend. So it's okay for us to act like it, as though this is real sometimes, you know. It's okay to still put fuel in your car instead of saying, you know, it's an illusion. I don't really need to do that. It, it should just be there. We're all one. So the fuel tank is filled. Um, the day will come when that will happen. It will. But for now, we play small, unfortunately. But the ancestors that are past, healthy and unhealthy ones, are parts of us. And we can help them heal as we heal ourselves. Believe it or not, as I heal myself, it's not even I have to heal my stuff with my ancestors, the unhealthy ones. As I heal, because I'm genetically encoded to them, it already reaches back, because time's an illusion, it reaches back in time and already changes them. So I don't have to sit and pray that they become better people. I just become one, and it'll upload to them and download to your children. And if you have no children, first, give thanks. Secondly, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank your lucky stars. Um, it's not really just about family. Uploading this direction, downloading that direction, you know, upstream and downstream. It, we're all connected. So ultimately, it doesn't end just with ancestors. It's actually everyone. The, the return to God will not happen until all souls recognize that there is only God. It, right now, it looks like work, and we got to do this, and we got to meditate more. We gotta, it's when we choose to see nothing else, there will be only God and then we're home. We think of it linearly, like we're working on it, and some of us are more spiritual than others. You know, religious versus non-religion, and then there's religious that becomes spiritual, and spiritual that become more mystical. You know, it looks like a growth, a movement. But even all of that is, you know, it's an illusion. It's really just, I'm, you know, allowing myself to awaken. It's not really, this book I saw woke me up. And it's not really... Um, my family did an intervention and got me in the 12-step program. I had to have decided that I'm ready to awaken before I could create them doing an intervention. This is all me. I'm deciding to wake up or to be asleep. It's a bit much for some minds because we, you know, we think linearly. They did or didn't do this or that. They gave me a raise, so now I have more money. They didn't give me a raise, now I don't. But it's they had the power. There's a level of consciousness that we reach where anything that we can imagine becomes instantaneously. I mean, Jesus pulled that off, and, and many great masters throughout history pulled that off. But Jesus is saying, everything I've been able to do, you're going to do. You'll see. And everybody wants to play small. So we like to just take our sweet little time you know, I'm growing spiritually. And you think, well, you know, now I'm getting, I'm meditating more, I'm more balanced in my life. And balance is so important. 
But we sort of think that we're, you know, getting there. And we're forgetting we're already there, dreaming that we're not there. But we're already there. So if we live, because there's a couple ways you can approach life. I'm working to get there, or I'm there, and the working to get there is just me catching up to myself. And the one is the faster. To recognize you're already there, and the rest is just me kind of moving myself along. As opposed to being at one end, grabbing, clawing, working to get enlightened. God created me in its image. So what work do I have to do? See? Just own it. Just owning our real, our spiritual selves. Uh, one of you asked about that word acceptance. That's what it's about. It's not, how, how do I own? Well, don't I have to read a certain number of books? Don't I have to meditate and feel certain things before I can call myself spiritually aware? No, it's just acceptance. Now, in the back of your mind, run that program, like one of those ongoing programs that are running all the time. I'm accepting, I'm accepting. And let the front program be the one that, you know, yeah, but I did this wrong today. Yes, but I'm accepting who I really am. But somebody doesn't like me anymore. They've said goodbye to me. Yes, but I'm okay. You see, like, it's okay the four brain in this sense, not literally, but it's okay in the front of your mind, you're having doubts and fears. But at the end of the day, can you forgive yourself for those doubts and fears? Those must not be your primary program that runs behind. Let the I am run as that constant program. The rest is just me with my silly human stuff. I am. Feeling kind of hungry for McDonald's this morning. Shh. I am. I am. Nice. Can I get over the fact that I'm all mystical? I went to a spiritual service. We all, you know, felt chills and saw sparkles of light. And I still wanted to get a hamburger after service. Forgive yourself. You know, I mean, that's what it's about. Because the real you is home. But it's dreaming that it's not. So forgive yourself for continuing to dream that we're not holy. On that note, we'll, we'll talk about something else. Kundalini. Third eye. Let's, let's kind of go in that direction. Now, you hear about Kundalini and, and people in certain circles are thinking in terms of, you know, hey, I'm going to this workshop. They, they guarantee it in the flyer. You're going to definitely raise your Kundalini and your third eye will open and all these. Don't go to those workshops, okay? Because you're just going to, if, if you're lucky, you'll end up a Kundalini casualty, okay? <laughs> If you're unlucky, you're just going to be screaming for a refund, okay? But it's, it's not a good thing because there's, there's, there's a mystic science reality to how these things are done. You don't try to force enlightenment, but that's the, the fast food way that people live on this planet anymore. But the kundalini, let's get this straight first. The kundalini rises through you in one of two ways. It rises up the center of your being to your crown and open, okay? That's what it would typically look like or feel like. This, you know, you see the pictures and paintings, this idea, you know, you look like a firework, one of those fountains out the top of your head, wow, you know, blissing out. And there's a second way that the Kundalini rises, which is up the fountain and then to the forehead, up and over. That's why the pharaohs wore the headdresses with the serpent here. The oldest forms of spiritual practice went more for the up and forward rather than up and out. That became a little more popular just a couple thousand years ago and today. And all your paintings, it just looks so perfect. The other is about awakening that crown. With The crown and third eye work well together. They work co cohesively. But the crown gets awakened, and then the, in the Bible you hear the phrase, my cup runneth over. That's the enlightenment reaches the crown and pours forward to the third eye. But in the right practices, like in yoga, you may have heard the term, the, uh, um, it's this circuit like in acupuncture, microcosmic orbit in some circles. Okay, so different terminology. But it goes up to the crown, pours to the third eye, and then depending on if you're practicing certain techniques, you there's techniques that you would use to bring the energy from the third eye down just below the navel. 
And it's stored there in, in Chinese medicine, for example, this sacred cauldron. And it's stored here, just in the Naval Center, which is really strange because Edgar Cayce used to recommend castor oil packs on the body. And he said, put them on the, below the navel. Why? Because this feeds the whole body. You can put these healing castor oil, which is the Latin name Palma Christi, which means the palm of Christ. So castor oil is the strongest, most powerful plant. I'm not comparing it to flower essences. Plant. It's the strongest plant. Its Latin name is the palm of Christ. Powerful stuff. So and you, and I'm not talking about ingesting it. I'm talking about its use on the body. So you do a, a heated pad in a castor oil on the tummy, and it feeds the whole body. You know, so Casey was on to that. But all these ancient practices understood. It's here. Now, if a person is, is doing things like in Taoism and in Tantra and other school, schools of thought, they understand that if you get stimulated and you expend your energy pelvically, you've actually taken your, store, your storehouse of energy and you've wasted it. It's better to take that energy down for the, you know, um, <laughs> then to the tailbone and up the tailbone through the spine to the crown and then to the third eye and then certain techniques, which I'm not going to go into, down to the navel again. And you fed it. You, you actually charged yourself. And do that as many times as you like so that you're building and building. So even sensual experiences are turned into this development of more chi through the body. And every time that energy moves through the spine, it's feeding all the nerves, which go to the organs and the glands. So you're, you're becoming more awake. However, we're told in the book of Revelation that there's only one being. It's the mother, the Holy Spirit, or the Christ that is worthy to open the channels, to open the chakras. When the book of Revelation describes, I saw a book. And on the book, there were seven seals, and then the seals get open, and you have all the creepy things of Revelation. But what he's describing is, the kundalini was going through my body. The book is my being. And its seven seals are seven chakras. So John is describing the awakening of each of these centers. But it's not like he just went, oh, it was so exciting. Bing, 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 bing. You know, like the old carnival game. Boom, bing. You know, you hit the thing, and it goes up, rings the bell. Wow, I just had my bell ring. You know, now, now I'm an official carny. Um, no, that's not what it was about. You're not just trying for that ping at the top. It's as I empty my old self, what happens is these center channels, there's the Sushumna center, and then there's Ida in Pingala. So that's the masculine and feminine serpentine up the center, which I call the Christ's channel or the central channel. But this kundalini is going to rise. You can force it to rise, not healthy, and can be dangerous. Or you can understand, when I empty myself, when I empty my ego and my old patterns, this thing that is symbolic of me becomes empty. And then what happens is the kundalini shakti energy that's sleeping at the base of the spine awakens. Because it's not saying, well, I might as well sleep because you don't listen to me anyway. So it just sleeps. But when you empty yourself, she says, whoa, what's happening? Nothing. I've emptied my opinions and judgments of the world and people and myself. Wow. So she starts moving up and activating the two channels, the masculine and feminine channels of Ida and Pingal. But she starts rising. Now, the good news is, She's rising, but what's she? She's me. She's the spirit of the Holy Spirit or the spirit of God within me. And she's rising. She, the feminine, is rising to meet he, the masculine. And then I have this alchemical fusion, potentially. It's going to be great news. The bad news is, while she's rising, anything that is unlike her purity gets burned. And so it might be like, God, I don't know why, but I've been getting this burning sensation in my back, or I'm starting to feel these strange... Uh, symptoms, you know, of what's going on. And people don't realize that some of their physical symptoms are actually this awakening process. You go to a doctor and, you know, they medicate it. And it's just so strange. One of my favorite quotes, I think, of all time, Voltaire, which I'm altering just slightly, but Voltaire, great mystic. 
And he said, you know, doctors prescribe medicines of which they know very little for, you know, bodies of which they know even less for diseases they know nothing about. It's like they're so clueless. No offense if you're a doctor. <laughs> because if you get a broken bone, go and see a doctor. If you, you know, but I'm saying it's a sad thing that people don't know mystic symptomology. Only linear body symptoms, and of which they know very little compared to what they will someday soon. So this kundalini is rising. So my emptying myself actually creates what's called a vacuum in the kundalini channels, a vacuum. When that vacuum is, let's, let's call it complete or, or activated, the kundalini will rise. So it starts moving through and it can create anything from odd little symptoms to major symptoms, major responses in the body. It could be, um, you know, movements, spontaneous movements, rocking or spiraling or channeling words, light language. I'll get into the symptoms in just a sec, but all kinds of things can happen. Physical sensations, but also some uncomfortable ones, burning, aching, you know, and why? Why, why do I get headaches? If Michael or somebody told me kundalini activity, why do I get headaches? Because if the muscles are tense in your neck and shoulder and head and all, and the kundalini is rising, it can't get through. So it's damming up. And so you get this pressure that you call a headache. I would, if it were me, I'd just get a chiropractic adjustment once in a while. I would get some massage. Know how to get this loosened up. Don't just go into meditation and start activating kundalini. If you know you've got this tendency, straight, you know, do some neck and shoulder rubs and rotations of the head. You know, Get prepared because you're like an instrument. The body can be seen like an instrument that, that sometimes if it's been sitting too long, it's, it's, let's, whether it's a, a flute or just a metaphor here or a harp, it's been in the closet a while. You're taking it out saying, oh, let's play some grand spiritual music that strings are out of tune, the wood's creaky, and you know, it's a problem. So you have to tune the instrument. And that mantra, prayer, water, believe it or not, get some water in the system before meditating, and stretching and opening muscles. So there's the, the, the 3D version of preparing this instrument. Then there's the spiritual psychological. Because you can go ahead and tune the body, do all kinds of wonderful postures, get all ready, sun salutation, but you still hate everybody. So, you know, what's the point? Sun salutation, oh, money, pardon me, I hate you. Oh, money, pardon me, I hate you. It doesn't do any good. You got to clear your stuff. You got to e even own it. It's okay. It's okay. Halfway through sun salutation. And believe it or not, God, I still hate everybody. And laugh at yourself. Isn't this funny, God? And say, because I know better. They're me. Wow, isn't that funny? People annoy me, but then they're me. Wow. So I'm putting all these opinions onto the altar as I do forward, you know, movements. Uh, it's the bowing right? Laugh at it. Tensing up around your physical blocks or your psychological or spiritual blocks isn't going to be helpful. Put it on the altar. Laugh a little bit. It's okay. Own these things. Just be willing to surrender them. Just be willing to say there's another way of, of seeing this. So kundalini, which is a linear term in a way because it's, we think of it as only one central channel, but it's really a process of awakening. It's symbolic of my rising in consciousness. Kundalini is rising. Well, when Kundalini rises, it's going to make me spiritual. No. As you're spiritual, it will follow your consciousness. You see? Don't try to force it up so that you become spiritual because that already affirms you're not spiritual, which means you're going to suffer some consequences of trying to force your spirituality that you're not really owning. So let me become spiritual. Some of the mystic organizations of the past, like the Rosicrucians, for example, they would say, you want your kundalini to rise? Here's how to do it. Be of service. What does service have to do with kundalini? I want my animal, third eye. 
become a better person. As you rise in consciousness, the kundalini bows to you and says, let me rise with you. That's the healthy, organic way to do this. So this energy, as it's moving up through our consciousness, it's really like visiting each chakra. So John, the, the apostle John, he was the way cool apostle of the apostles. Um, <laughs> he writes, these seals are being opened. But what's he describing? You see, he's saying, and the kundalini knocked on the second door. And the third door. See, it's, he says the seals are being opened. It's like it's the seals are being opened. But really what he's saying is, oh, man, let me tell you what happened when it activated the third center. And the fourth, because what you're finding is all the critters that you allowed to live inside the flute when it was stored away in your attic for years. You play that flute and it's like, all this dust comes blowing out. That's the chakras being open. Oh, I can't wait for my chakras to be open. Watch what you pray for. Because anything that's unhealed in these centers, when the kundalini hits them, they're coming out. So the book of Revelation says, who's worthy to open the seals? If I were you, I would say, not me. I'm going to ask the mother of God, the, the mother aspect of God, the Holy Spirit, to guide me through this. Okay? And then she will move you through that. She will determine when you're ready. She will protect you through these processes. It doesn't mean you won't get an ache or you might, won't, you know, a bad dream tonight when you open to certain center. That's the stuff showing up. If you can't stand the idea of these things showing up, because the world is now entering a global dark night of the soul. It's already in it, but we're moving through that. So the whole world is now going to go through what John described in Revelation, which is not bad news. We are awakening. So watch this. I love these things because they come, you know, as I'm speaking, I'm going, ooh, good one. So <laughs> when people are going, oh, hello, beloveds, we're all moving into the fifth dimension. I just smile inside because they're, they're just like the kundalini people that are like, I'm, I'm raising my kundalini. I went to a workshop. Today I'm going to go and pay $99.99 for kundalini awakening. I'm sorry for you because it's just like the people going, we're ascending. Ooh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's kind of my internal response. Because with the ascension, it has to go all else that's not very ascended. If you got jealousies, they're going to have to show up. Why are they showing up? So you can release them and ascend. Because you can only ascend as much as you descend into your stuff. You try to rise in your little, you know, would you like to rise in my ascension balloon, as sang by, you know, 60s song. Um, you want to rise, but you've got anchors holding you down. So you've got to own them. You've got to cut the ropes to those anchors. Here's an old relationship thing that I'm still holding on. Cut. And you rise a little. Here's some stuff that I really judge myself a lot. Cut. And she, the mother, is going to show you those things. You know, here, honey. Oh, wait, look, you scra scraped your knee. Now we have to clean a little bit more. In her patience or love, she'll show you those things. We're going to have to work on this. This might ow a little, but, you know, she's cleaning the wound. And she's right. She's right that it'll get infected if you don't let her wash it out. That's all she's asking us to do during our ascension process. Are you willing to look at stuff? And the false New Agers are, oh, no, I don't want any of that. I just believe in positive thinking, so I'm going to ascend. You know what? I mean, I, I really wish that that were true, that we could all just own ourselves into enlightenment and never have to look at our stuff. But, you know, inside of that word om is also, oh my God. You know, so it's not just om and you go home. It's, it's om, yes. And you chant the om and stuff will arise at times. You're doing nothing but om. It should be very peaceful, but you notice an ache. So stretch a little. Take care of this thing right here that we think we are. The om is who we really are but we do still think we're something else. So you can say, I'm a mystic. I'm going to start no longer eating food. I'm going to be a breatharian. Um, that's fine, but why? Well, because food, it's toxic. Ah, so in your spiritual quest to be fasting, we've already got a new insight. You judge food. That's what you should be looking at. No, I don't want to believe that. La, 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 la. I don't want to hear that. That's just denial. 
Let's look at your judgment of foods. Because what you want is peace with food. And you think it's going to come by not having food. It's going to come by not judging food. And it's the same with people. If only I could just hide away in the mountains of the Himalayas. You know, Yeti doesn't want you either. The Yeti of the Himalayas. He'll be like, oh my God, more of these people, you know. You know, and he'll get kind of irritated at you and chase you through the snow-capped mountains of Shasta or whatever, you know, the Himalayas. Okay? So, anyway. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for peace. Peace. Peace with all creatures. Peace with all thoughts and feelings. Total peace. But you can't really have peace if you're not willing to look at what makes you not feel peace. Things that irritate. So that's a tricky part of the path that we try to bypass. It's called spiritual bypassing. I'm just going to ignore things and just only go to the positive. Great for those who go there. They're still, if they fear death and they're positive thinkers, they're still going to have to face death. If they're positive thinkers, but they don't want to lose a loved one, and you lose a loved one, they're still going to have to feel it. Whatever seems organic to them, they're going to have to see it and feel it. Their issue is not yours. So we each have our, our little tests of life. So the kundalini is moving through, and it's an amazing thing because tens of thousands of minor meridians you have seven primary chakras, but you also used to have more, and soon people will find that they do have more being reawakened or opened up. But there's seven primary traditional chakras. So as the kundalini or energy and my consciousness is rising, it's awakening these centers, activating these things and my lessons and whatever, it might open my fourth, then back to my third. It might work the root, then might come back to the heart again. It's not just linear, bing, 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 and then grandiose ending. It's, it's a process, but it does move through us. I cover a lot of that in this book called The Seven Initiations on the Spiritual Path, okay, that I wrote. Um, but it's moving through, and it's awakening these centers at various degrees. It's not one time blasted open. It's opened as much as you can handle, then it moves on to another, and then back, and then here and there. So the seven are being awakened. Then you have several minor chakras. But then there's chakras, like I said, that people have forgotten about. And these seven chakras, when they're awakened and the energy's moving up through the spine, it activates the nerves. But in our nerves are tens of thousands of other meridians running through our nerves. And you have like seven trillion nerves. So everything's happening. When she is rising, the mother is birthing me into higher consciousness. She's also bringing my nerves and the nadis or meridians, the channels. She's also raising their vibration. Ascension isn't just like I, I sit and, and say, do one particular ascension chant or listen to a, an ascension CD. And next thing I knew, I was in heaven. This is a process. I've said many times, you don't go to heaven, you grow to heaven. It's a consciousness we're developing. And with it, because I'm a holistic being, as I'm growing, there's stuff happening. Chakras opening, bringing up stuff. Meridians are being activated. Nerves can be healed if I channel this energy properly. It goes up the center, feeds the central nervous system, feeds all my nerve endings, feeding my glands, feeding my organs. And the glands are working in, you know, unison with the related chakra. So you have a thyroid, a thymus here as a gland, but the heart is the center. So there's an organ and a gland with each major chakra. So all of this is, there's so much going on. And we just think we're like linear beings. We're going to work today. Oh, okay, I took a shower, we're going to work, driving home and turn on the news and then go to bed. Man, we're, we're like this complete ecosystem, this complete universe. And people have forgotten that. So in this, in this complex system, this, this I am awakening, there's nothing outside myself. When you experience like a new book or a movie you saw or a new relationship, anything you can name that you've gone through, you're actually describing not what you think. Oh, um, God, I think I'm going through like this thing called the dark night of the soul. That's your heart chakra opening. I'm feeling universal love for all that's your heart chakra opening. Oh, I started getting into pagan traditions. That's your root chakra. 
oh, I'm doing a lot of inner child work and family stuff. Navel chakra. Everything you do is in you. It's one of your center's awakening. It's still okay to call it stuff, but just don't overanalyze. Don't, don't you know, I got a haircut. Which chakra is that? Just get a haircut. <laughs> God, you know. Just get the haircut, be at peace, let it go. But when this energy rises, it, if it comes up and brought over, it awakens the third eye. And the third eye has a, a, a cluster of symptoms relayed to it. it. I mean, you know, different things can happen. Um, I'll name seven, like, the, the most common things that occur. But please remember what I said about how this is all connected. You're not just seeking the third eye opening. So you create a vacuum of self, ego, and kundalini, which is like saying, I'm making room for God. So when you've made the room, she shows up. Wow, this is pretty cool. Wow, this works. It's amazing. It's, it's right. And the same goes for the third eye. You don't try to force your third eye open. It's, it's going to cause potential hazards in your life. So instead of you know, going and buying some mini jaws of life to try to stick in your forehead and open your third eye, um, <laughs> what happens is, look at the cultures that know how to bow the forehead to the ground. It's symbolic. This thing that I seek, which is my awakening and unison of the divine feminine and masculine in me, Father, Mother, God, I'm going to bow what I think to the ground, meaning of my little self, I know nothing. And then everything can be given to me. So when that opens, there's, you know, there's sometimes uh, discomforts, uh, comforts, discomforts, different things happen. But when you're opening the third eye, it's kind of like saying, these eyes, the dualistic eyes, these two, when I see two uh, with two eyes, there's, I'm seeing duality. So these are my human vision receptors. There's another eye that I'm surrendering to. And that is, I want to see as God sees instead of as I, my ego, sees. So what, just like I clear myself and make room for the kundalini, God's presence, so too with the third eye. So it's like this. When I desire to see nothing but God, the third eye will open. It can't not open. When you want to see the God in others, it will open. When you, you're making this decision. So if I were talking about the book of Revelation in relation to seven chakras, look at this. In the end, it talks about the last judgment, which everybody starts shivering. Oh my God, judgment day. The last judgment is when the kundalini reaches the crown. Can you walk into the last judgment? Oh no, I've heard bad things about it. Say yes. I will walk into the last judgment, which is the day I have decided I'm making my last judgment. I'm surrendering judgment. Then the third eye is opening because it says, oh, this is great. You no longer choose to see judgmentally. You can't open the one single eye unless you're deciding to see singly as God sees. It's a humble thing. Just, I just, God help, help me. Mother, Holy Spirit of God, show me how to see as you see. And then she says, and so it is. And I'll share um, some of the symptoms, but I'm also going to share, because one of you asked before service about uh, a certain prayer, so I'm going to come back to that. So if you want to know if your third eye has opened, guys, it's not like, guess what? I looked in the mirror, weirdest thing. There was an eye on my forehead. Um, <laughs> Now, I mean, if you hit the tattoo parlor last night, there might be one. But it's not about you saw it. L listen, if you start recognizing that you're having insights about life that are not coming from intellectual deduction, that's a symptom of the third eye opening. If you notice that, like clairvoyance, that's what it means. Clairvoyance is like clear seeing. If you're noticing that you can see auras or sparkles or things a little bit different. You're hearing light language, Claire audience. You're hearing like sounds and language. You close your eyes and you can see sacred geometries. Your dreams are getting clear. In other words, all of the things you might interpret as your psychic self, 
that's probably a, a good sign, a good idea that, yeah, that's what's happening. The third eye is opening. Um, a third one I'm going to name is kind of similar to the second, but I'm going to name it anyway, which is it's like you now can see people. You, you know what they're thinking. It's not just the clairvoyance. It's you kind of feel more bonded mind to mind with people. Um, there's also one that's very common. You, I'm sure you would have named it yourself is there's an overwhelming sense of oneness. Now, guys, don't get like, you know, into despair if you go, well, I, I don't have any of it. It doesn't matter. These are going to happen for you. Everybody's got their different layers and levels. And, you know, you might have come in with religious commitments, religious vows that you never wanted to be too psychic. It scared you in some other lifetime. So you might have all these filters and blocks about these things happening. Just forgive that too. It's okay. You're already home, dreaming we're still here. So don't judge yourself for not having enough of the symptoms of psychic development or kundalini awakening or third eye awakening. It's not going to help. So you just realize um, there's, these, there's these moments of oneness, and it's even a feeling. I mean, you might not even realize you've had these. You could be walking into a store and just like felt like love and appreciation for the other people in the store somehow. Or you might have seen somebody who lost a loved one feeling sad and you felt compassion. That's, that's it. That's a sign of I'm learning to see differently, learning to see other people's needs and not just my own. That's part of it. There are literal sensations, uh, buzzing in the head, sensations on the forehead, like you're, something's touching you there, you know. Um, but yeah, sometimes pressure in the in the forehead. This is not to say that every, you know, sensation like this is always a third eye opening, but we need to be open to, to the idea that you know, they could very well be it. Um, when your third eye opens, you're really, you're really raising, heightening your senses. So the sixth item I'll name is like sensitivity to sound and light. Everything? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so it could be a little much, you know, too much light, which is migraine-like. But uh, light kind of gets you freaked out and loud sounds because, you know, you're you're, you're becoming heightened in your awareness. Even heightened sensitivity to food can also be that because my vibrations are raising so certain foods just don't, they're not compatible anymore. And the last one I'll name is a heightened number of synchronicities. Um, I believe that everybody watching a program like this likely has at least some amount of every one of the things I just named and at least a lot of some of them. But it's if you're, if you're watching this presentation and you live or online and you say, well, I, I don't remember any of those, it just means you're not remembering it or putting it together. I, I can guarantee you can't watch a program like this and not have your third eye to some degree opened. I, I typically don't have people that are just like the consciousness of a brick, you know? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have any kind of sensitivity, uh, you know. You know, you just, it's not usually the kind of people that, yeah, I'm going to watch this program because it offers nothing whatsoever. That's just not usually what we would have. So how beautiful, you know, how beautiful to say, you know, I can feel it. I know there's physical sensations. There's psychic awarenesses. Some of them are sensitivities like, ouch, and others are like, wow, you know, it's okay. Whatever these things are that you sense, you can put together and connect with this process that now you can stop and say, okay, wait a minute. A couple things I'm getting from this talk. One of them is I really am ascending in consciousness. I know it because I have felt some sort of heat moving through my torso. And it's possibly this kundalini thing. Well, what's kundalini? That's the Holy Spirit of God rising to a higher level of connection to me. That's pretty cool. I'm glad I've got that. 
There's also symptoms of the Kundalini and of it reaching the, the crown and then the third eye. I feel buzzing on my crown. It feels like there's tickling or something's touching me there. It may very well be doing so. When you do deep spiritual work, guys, you're not on your own. Of myself, I am nothing. Call on the Holy Spirit. Call on the Christ. Call on the highest thing you can believe in to help you through the process. But it is quite remarkable because I've had clients who describe things like, you know, Michael, when we did that process, I could actually, I, I had to open my eyes and look because something was touching my, my crown. I mean, it's beautiful because something was. And, and what is it? Well, maybe you had an annoying relative that's hanging around that passed away and it's messing with you, but not likely. It could very well be that you need to own the fact that there is a God that it does have angels working for it and other beings working for it and that they're there with you when you set your stuff aside and said, I'm ready. I'm ready to raise my consciousness. God, it's amazing. There's angels that get this, you know, de -de -de memo and they're like, oh, wow, somebody's raising their consciousness. Who's got this one? Oh, we're going to go. A few of us. We were all hanging out at the Heaven Cafe anyway. So we all got the warning. So we're going to go down and say hello. And they come down and one puts their hands on your shoulders and you feel this, you know, whoa, what's that? And then this at the crown and whatever else they feel to do. And they'll know because they're working for the mother. And the mother will just, it's a knowingness. They're not con conversing, but the mother will communicate to them. This is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. And these angels just ignite, you know, they're, they're honored to be in your presence because you're waking up. And it's just like attending a birth. It's like pretty beautiful. So one of them might hands on the shoulders. Another might put hands on your feet to ground you if that's what's needed. Another could be doing energy cleansing, your aura pulling stuff out. Another could be helping to download memories that you need to heal and say goodbye to. And all of them might be toning as this is happening. sounds and you know and the vibrational stuff and just you know and you might just I, I was I was just sitting down for a bowl of cereal and you're like you know all this kind of stuff well you know watch what you ask for but if I were you if it's appropriate location like a courtroom for a traffic ticket it wouldn't be the right time but I if I were you and you start to feel this I would surrender to it and let it move through you remain the witness don't get lost in it and disappear. Keep your feet grounded, you know, remain the witness. As long as you can see what's happening, if you start to lose that, you might want to come back to your body and make sure you're grounded. That's just a good, safe thing to do sometimes. But I would surrender it. If you start shaking, just let go and let it happen even more. Don't force it or make it. Just surrender to it so more of that energy healing can process. You have free will and you're allowed to say it's getting scary and reground yourself, and they will honor that if they're beings of light. Okay. I want to move into um, the 23rd Psalm. You're familiar with it. Everybody knows the words for the most part. You've, it, you've at least heard them, but I'm just going to say it once, and then we're going to go into a, a brief meditation. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You, God, you lead me down into green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul and lead me in paths of righteousness for your namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Now, surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all through my days, and I shall dwell in the kingdom of God forever. With that, slow, relaxed breathing. And we call upon the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Mother, aspect of God, 
I, your holy child, the Christ self, come to you to experience this process of clearing and awakening. I come to you to experience this process. However, I am humble and knowledgeable enough to know that to do any process while carrying stuff hinders the process. So to you, Mother, onto the altar I place anything that needs to be released today so that I can reach my highest available consciousness. I place on the altar, and everybody just allow her to help you recognize something spontaneous. It could be something you didn't think was an issue. A bill you can't pay, hurts from the past, major issues, a minor annoyances, whatever it is, any and all of them. They come to my mind, place them on the altar. Empty. Another one comes to mind, possibly, place it on the altar, come back to emptiness. You, my God, are my shepherd. I shall not want. Repeat that once in your mind. And then add this. Not in words, just in awareness. By saying that, you're my shepherd, I shall not want. It means you're acknowledging the upper three chakras within your own being. These divine centers, they're allowed now to begin this prayer and this spiritual journey we're starting into right now. This is in your hands, God. I shall not want means in this moment, I affirm no needs. And my upper three chakras begin to harmonize with the voice, the sound of God. I am that I am. Be still all parts of myself, and know the I am presence of God. Lord, you make me lie down in green pastures. Repeat that once. And then understand what it means. Is the you that was a moment ago in God that says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's now saying to you, I'm going to make you lie down in green pastures. It means God is sending you down to your root chakra. Green pastures, earth. I'm sending you to the earth. I'm here, I'm here fully with no judgments of my material self. This is my health, prosperity, vitality, and I'm here, you guiding me. Peace. You lead me beside still waters. I now move up to the water emotional chakra. We'll call it the navel today. You lead me beside the still waters. The reason it's called still waters is because they're calm. The emotions are being told. Calm, peace, the presence of God. You restore my soul, the solar plexus, the thinker, the cognitive mind. You restore my soul. I can calm my thinking down. A place of fire where I judge and lead me in path of righteousness for your namesake. This is the lower mind. We're bringing comfort to the fire center. Being healed of anger, willfulness, And in this center, 
this path of righteousness for your namesake, it, it means I'm going to let this ego trinity, the first, second, and third chakra, be surrendered. You lead me, God. You lead me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid. This is the heart chakra. I will not be afraid because you are with me. My heart can open now. I can trust again. You are with me. You might feel compelled to place one or two hands on your heart to really feel that. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. This means I'm walking through life. There is stuff in this world, dark night of the soul, frightening moments, thoughts, insights, past lives, stuff. I will not live in fear. Fear in my heart, no. Because you're with me. And saying that calls yet again for the kundalini at the root to now feel safe enough to begin rising. That's why it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It means the center channel, the staff, the spine, the sushumna center up the center of the body. That is the light of God, the rod of God. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Repeating that to yourselves once. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Prepare a table, it's like a feast. And why is it referring to a table and a feast? Because it's now your throat chakra, your mouth, where you would eat. Except you're saying, you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. Where I used to judge people with my mouth, I now choose the throat center, the Christ center, to be open so that I can know the Christ in me and the Christ in others. I can speak more and more praise and gratitude for the Christ that I see in others and myself. and it rises to the crown. You anoint my head with oil. The crown. This is not of my doing. You, Divine Mother, anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over and it pours to the third eye. See it and feel it gently pouring over. The third eye made available to open however much you would choose, however much you feel safe to do so. The mother will follow your lead in that sense, your safety level. But can we just surrender to her and let her pour forward to the third eye and it opens? Breathe and relax into that. This is the two-petaled lotus, where all the others, four petals and eight petals, thousand petals, two petals only, the third eye. But one represents the right lobe of your brain, one the left. So in this process, even the brain is made harmonious. My masculine and feminine self brought to peace. And now, imagining ourselves bowing in humility, the forehead, and then rising again with our arms outstretched in, that, in our mind's eye. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all through the rest of the days of my life and beyond. And I will dwell in the consciousness or kingdom of God forever. Mm -hmm. 
and this beautiful pouring down the front of the body to the navel center with each exhale for the next couple of breaths is just this acknowledgement. I have in this moment risen to a new level of consciousness, but that new level of consciousness is going to pour down the front back to my navel center because it's affirming that I'm going to take higher consciousness down into my day-to-day -day life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord does not mean I will hover only up in my crown chakra and be ungrounded. We still bring it back to the earth plane because that's where we, where we know to be of service to others. That's where it all comes back around again. very slowly relax and stretch out a bit. I think I covered most of the questions you asked about, including the sh word Shambhala. When people talked about journeying north to Shambhala, guys, it was always symbolic of the journey inside to Shambhala in the north. And people thought, some people thought, it's a mountain, a mountain, high mountain region somewhere north in the north hemisphere of the planet. Well, wait, it's symbolic. Higher is in you. North is in you. Right? The snow-capped mountains even. No problem. It's in you. That's the purity, the white snow, the purity of consciousness up in the crown. It's just learning to interpret things with a deeper perspective instead of kind of dry linear. You know, so before you pack your backpack to go look for Shambhala, it's here. When, when Moses talks about climbing the mountain and seeing God, um, yes, it can literally be something he did externally, but you can bet it's also an internal experience for him. When he went up the mountain and communed with God and he saw a burning bush, it's when his hair was lit afire. The burning bush is this. It was His crown was glowing and he was communing with God. When he brings back the Ten Commandments, he comes down the mountain. That's you and me coming down the front, the energy coming down the front. And when he comes down with Ten Commandments, it's the righteous teachings of both the left brain and right brain, the two lobes of that third eye. So if Moses would have said, yeah, this is um, a weird experience I had today, um, tablets and mountains and it would have kind of gone flat. It's because he actually experienced that initiation that made him what he was, a master. He became an ascended master. So all of these grand experiences, they're all really needing to be understood. This is me. When you have death in your life, a part of you died, not just a person. When you're hungry, Oh man, I'm really, I could really eat something. You're never actually hungry for food. That is your ego interpreting your compulsion to be body related. Every time you're, I don't care if you're hungry for a drink, a snack, or whatever, you're always really hungry for God. And the day will come where people will stop reaching outside and go inside. The sacred romance everybody's seeking is the one with God. That doesn't mean you can't have human romance, but bring the one with God to the romance. And that's bringing the energy up and down the front again. You see? It's amazing if you just change the, the angle of how you're looking at things. It's, it's really all about me and my process. You know, um, pushy people annoy me. Really? Where's that in me? Heal. Track it down and heal it. Release it. Um, I won the lottery. That's me reaching a new level of awakening and deservability. It's really all me. Um, next time you see your mother or father, I want you to remember to say to them, remember you used to say, I think everything's about me? Well, it's true. Everything really is all about me. Remember when you said you think the universe revolves around you? Well, hey, guess what? It actually does. No, don't say that to them. But it's true. Everything really is just us mirroring out to ourselves. I as an individual and we as a collective are just seeing our process. 
You need not be afraid of your personal or global dark night of the soul, but it, it can be disturbing. Your personal one, you know, it can be disturbing. It's hardship, human hardship. Keep your eyes on the light at the end of the tunnel instead of the trials and tribulations in the tunnel. Keep your eyes focused on the light at the end. That's one of the best things I can tell you to do during the dark night. It's the same for the global dark night. If humanity is to go through more and more things, and I assure you it is and will, um, keep your eyes on the light at the end of the tunnel. What's the point of your kundalini rising and sitting at these centers and praying and meditating, going on red rocks or drum circles? What's the point of any of that if you just lose your mind as soon as the world starts getting tested? You have to decide, am I going to be one of the ones to remind people to hold on a little longer inside? Or am I going to be one of the first people screaming and shouting, you know, and panicking? I mean, it's free will. I, I just tell you to please, if you want to experience the greatest peace you ever imagined, it's going to be by you passing your own tests. Try not to lose your mind. And if you do, forgive yourself and bounce back again. We're going to take up our collection and our then do our closing prayer. Please, please, please be as generous as you can be. And, and just like the linear thing, please don't think in terms of, oh, we got to do that gratuitous thing about donating. Please understand, this is you. You can afford, you are prosperous. And I don't care if you don't have cash in your money, say it anyway. I really am prosperous. I have the abundance of God here, prosperity of God here, and the cash of God down here. I'm fully prosperous. You can afford to give, and let's create a more abundant life for yourself. So you take your love offerings online. There's a button you can click to make donations. Hold that to your open, open hearts. Repeat with me, please. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and so it is. Beautiful. Thank you. While they're passing those around, can anyone share what you learned or heard today that made the most sense? What you learned or heard today that's helpful to you or that might end up being helpful to other people you work with or encounter. What did you hear today? Yes. We're already home. Yeah. How to approach life as though you're needing to go somewhere or as though you're there and just needing to catch up with yourself. Beautiful. Glad you liked it. Anyone else? And the meditation. Did anybody, uh, did you do well with the meditation? Do you get that that prayer was all about this? Seriously. My cup runneth over. It's not like some superstitious thing or some poetic thing. He was describing when you're walking with me beside still waters, he's describing you and me walking through our initiations of life. And that when I really get there, wow, I'm going to really go through a lot of fear before I reach enlightenment facing my stuff, but I need not fear because God's with me. Right on. Then anoint my head with oil, the, the feast, the anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over, and then here's my new life. Because I've risen in consciousness, I have a new life. So he says, and you will, you know, I will dwell in the house of God. It's not you're going to go to heaven someday. It's if I rise in consciousness, I awaken to a new level and I'm living in the earth plane with a higher level of consciousness. I think it's great stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and um, mm, yeah, great, just great. Love the vibes of what we're doing, guys. Um, and it's all about not just listening to it on a Sunday. It's not even just about experiencing it on a Sunday with us. It's about soaking it in and letting it change you permanently. If you don't get that, then you're, hit, you're still hearing with your head, which is better than nothing. But to experience, absorb, and change, becoming a higher person, that's the kundalini route again. I'm experiencing here, I'm letting it change me here, and I reach a higher level of consciousness in the upper three centers. Okay? 
So I hope if you had any confusions or questions or whatever about Kundalini and about third, I hope I kind of cleared some of those up and it proves to be helpful, especially since so many of you are, are teachers. And please consider going to the next level with that for yourselves. Don't just like talk about stuff like it's theory. Don't get into a conversation back and forth with people about Kundalini, you know, in your town or your centers or here, Sedona. Uh, Kundalini is this. Don't, don't waste breath with people that don't want to hear the truth. Listen and acknowledge them and meet them at their level and congratulate them for whatever they believe. If they ask you your opinion, remember, well, here's the Kundalini does. See, I'm saying it in an affirmative. The kundalini and, you know, the third eye, you know, say things like it's better to let spirit guide you in the process. That's a fact. It's the truth. So say it. Don't go, well, um, I kind of think that maybe God should be about. No, speak it, man. Stand up. It's okay. If they persecute you for it, they're mirroring your fears. So just say, get behind me, Satan. I, I've got something to share. If they don't want to hear it, don't, it's okay. Be silent. But if they ask you, if the moment is there, step up and own the things we talked about today. If you don't agree with something I said, let it go. But if you agree, it's yours. It's not, don't quote Michael in the grocery store. Well, there's this guy who said, own it. You be those teachers. The world's going to need a lot more teachers in these coming days. Don't be afraid, man, because it's your real self that I'm talking to. I'm not telling you, I'm not telling your ego, you know, yeah. Okay. If you come from your ego, then you should be afraid because that's all the ego is, is fear. So don't come from the ego. Come from your light. This is you. I'm talking to you right now, and yet I'm part of you. I'm either your ego self trying to mess with your mind, and I'm totally out of my mind, and we're all wrong, or you heard something that was true, which means I'm symbolizing divine inside of you. And if it is divine, why not listen to it? Let's go to a new level. Please stand for our closing prayer. Gratitude, feeling such immense gratitude. Oh, grateful for the sharing today, for the group of souls. Lots of love and light in the eyes of each other. Look, man, how beautiful. Really feeling grateful for our beloved musician, Jaya Lakshmi, for being with us. Today. Oh, and remember, generosity. Generosity. A dollar, a thousand dollars, whatever. Leave with her at her table in the foyer. You can buy CDs of hers. They're fabulous, right? They're fabulous. Great music, as you heard. And the songs vary. They're not all one style. It's, they're varied. So ask her what's on each one. But also, open your heart. Offer a donation, because we love to see abundance for everyone here. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we go, God is. I am. We are. And so it is. Peace be with you all. We'll see you.